what time it is. It's time for Flay a Fish. <laughs> uh, that's right. Uh, today's not Wednesday, but it's still Ash Wednesday because that's when I get my new comics. There they are. I'm in the car, so if you hear a rumble in the background, it's because I drive a Mini and uh, they make rattling noises. <laughs> they're, they're not the quietest car on the planet. Um, but they're cool. They, they have a lot of character. I, I don't personally mind. Not great for recording, but it's like about 100 degrees right now in SoCal. And um, Gavin Newsom says that we can't have we can't have the electricity running because socialism is awesome and life is so much better when we can't power the grid in a state that is so rich. It's the, I think the fifth largest economy in the world, I, I, whatever. Um, it's just, this is what happens when you tax everybody to death and, uh, nothing works anymore because you get a bunch of idiots. Anyways, uh, I, I said a long time ago that I wasn't going to be political in my videos. Um, I mean, I used to be political in my videos and then I was like, you know, I'm trying to ease away from this, but shit is getting so bad. I, I, I don't care anymore. Like I'm, I don't, I absolutely do not mean to offend anybody. So if, if you are a liberal, um, I don't have any ill will towards you. Um, but I have it very much ill will towards the policies that you support. And uh, I do actually believe there's a lot of liberals out there that support the ideas they support because they genuinely think they're good. I and I believe that they're actually being misled. I think a lot of there's a lot of liberals out there that if they really understood what uh, what what their beliefs align to, they would find out that they're really a lot more conservative than they think. They, they've been taught because we're all brought up in a state-run education system. We've been taught that conservatism is bad, and so everyone's afraid to align themselves. They, if, if any idea of theirs goes, oh, uh, that's conservative, they're like, oh my god, I must be thinking bad things, and then they they try to, the, the cognitive dissonance, you know, causes you to go back and think, but it's like, look, like, a big example is uh, mar marijuana legalization, People think, oh, it's like, oh, yeah, the Demo it's like, no, that's a conservative idea. Ash, well, you're crazy. That's that's totally not. No, listen. In Western culture, non-European, modern Western culture, the the, dem the political compass, or the spectrum, I should say, it's, it's think of it like a thermometer. On the left, and you have the right. Right, right is conservative. Left is liberal. On the left, if you if you could imagine going as absolute far left as possible is 100% state control and 0% personal freedom. Um, I'll give you something to look at. This is my view. Um, if you... On the right-hand side is the opposite. It's 100% personal freedom, 0% state control. So no one is really ultimate right or ultimate left. We all fall somewhere in the middle. We all believe that we need a little bit of government, right? It's, or some of us believe a lot of government, but we all believe that government's needed. And we also all believe that we should have some personal freedoms, <laughs> right? None of us thinks that we should be slaves. So that's the thing. And so getting to the point, so when you think about marijuana legalization, um, you realize that making it illegal is anti-personal freedom but pro state control. That's the state uh, telling you that you, what you can and can't put in your body. But Democrats have kind of championed this idea, or like claimed it, I should say. I, Joe Biden was the, one of the biggest anti marijuana people on the planet and got so many people in jail. Um, just give me a little tour. I, I parked at a nearby park uh, to eat my little fish sandwich here. But, uh, anyways. I don't know why I'm going off on this run. This wasn't planned. Um, but I, I just want you to understand where I come from a little bit. And I believe I'm a conservative because I believe heavily in personal freedom and limited state control. I believe we should have a government. 
I believe we need, you know, things like a military. We need to organize so we can have fire stations and police and things like that. I even believe in public schools to a certain extent, but I believe in limiting that as much as possible. Um, if history has shown us anything, it's that government always messes things up and having government control things is bad. If you don't believe me, go to the DMV and um, realize that these are the same people that think that they can manage your health care. So, um, now you can look at my filet of fish box. Uh, yeah, so that's where I'm coming from. Liberalism, the more state control, that's why I'm against liberalism. I, I'm, I very much want more personal freedom. And also, here's the other thing. It's not absolute. I'm, you may have ideas, or I may have ideas. There's sometimes I'm for certain ideas that are more left-leaning. You know, it's not like if you're right or left, everything is going to be on the right or everything's going to be on the left, you know. Um, obviously, if I believe in uh, a fire department, like local, like that's that's a state-run thing. Like if I believe in public schools, that's a state-run thing. So obviously those are more left-oriented. But in the greater whole, I think in most cases, I just want the government out of my life and I want my personal freedom. And um, the only time the government should be in my life is preventing me from interfering in your life, <laughs> you know? So that's where I'm at. Um, so when I talk about these things, you understand that I'm not, it's not party affiliated, right? And that's, I think, where a lot of people get misled too. They associate, okay, Democrat is what leftism is, Republican is what right is. And that's not the case. If you analyze Republican policies, for the most part, I'd say 90% Republicans are left-leaning. They're very much pro-government this, pro-government that. That's why, like, the Democrats, oh, marijuana, the Republicans, oh, no, anti-marijuana. It's like, they're both state-controlling things. Um, now, true Republicanism comes from a more conservative viewpoint, and so that's where it gets its reputation, but... I don't think since Reagan has there been a Republican that's really been about conservatism. George H.W. Bush was a leftist. He was a big globalist. Remember, he was the coin guy who coined the New World Order. Um, and then there's uh, his son, which was also a big globalist leftist. That the surprise, the Biden administration's now totally praising, and you know, this Vice President Cheney, his daughter, like it's, they're all. It's all big uniparty. I am anti-big government. That's what leftism is. And you say, well, Ash, no, the left and the right, blah, blah, blah. European par parliament politics are very different. And that's going to confuse a lot of people. In European parliamentary politics, there is only the left. Now, amongst the left, you have what they call right wing and left wing, which is based on the parliamentary house seating. So there's two sides of the house. The right wing is the aristocracy. The left wing is the commoners, the House of Commons. So a lot of people associate that terminology, left wing. Oh, you're for the common man. If you're right wing, you're for the big rich business owner or the noble or whatever. And yes, that's how it was in European politics back hundreds of years ago. And I guess still today they still have that. And so Europeans use that terminology slightly different. But in modern Western culture, we don't have parliamentary politics. We don't have a House of Commons and a, and the whatever the other side, the right side of the house. With we don't have that. We just have a government for the people by the people. And so, unfortunately, this terminology has been skewed and manipulated and caused lots of confusion. So, in the future, if you ever hear me say right wing versus left wing, I am talking about. Essentially, authoritarianism versus personal freedom, and uh, sometimes I, I recognize. Anyways, I went way off on a tangent. Um, it's probably not going to be very impressive, but let's show off our fillet of fish. And say, Ash, why didn't you get in and out? Look, you fooled us. We come here for the burger. This was free. It's free. It's a free sandwich, and I got a water. And you know, with gas being five something a gallon, and I got to buy comics. I can't always buy in and out, but I get, trust me, I get in and out, but it's free. I like filet fishes and they're free. So, uh, this is my Gavin Newsom, um, I can't afford food <laughs> video. Uh, it's been brought to you not by in and out or Dave's hot chicken. Uh, if you have a Dave's hot, dude, if you, this is the best chicken place ever. Um, 
Anyways, I'm going to eat the sandwich and then I'll show you off some I comics. I realized that I said I'm going to show you off some comics. I don't know what kind of English that is. So, um, so yeah, check this out. I got this on Amazon. I love this. Uh, it's like a little table and it just grips your steering wheel. They make plastic ones. I got this for like 10 or 12 bucks. So, um, yeah, it's cool. <laughs> uh, if you ever eat in your car, I cannot recommend this uh, highly enough. Um, if you need to know the exact one, reach out to me on Discord. I can probably send you a link. But there's a ton. Um, I think if you just search like steering wheel table or something. Forget how I found it. But uh, the, I got the wooden one because I just figured the plastic one, I don't know, just seemed janky. But this is nice. It's like cutting board quality wood. Um, on the back side, it's got little grooves and little cup holder section, but then it's got a smooth side with a little groove here for like a tablet, I guess, but I'm just putting the comics. Anyways, uh, I just think it's kind of neat. I eat in the car semi-regularly and I hate eating in the car. I hate eating in the car, mostly because I like to eat at a table and this lets you put it, it's cool. It's, you can't put a ton of weight on it, but easily put your food. So anyways, get to the books. Um, I have a couple that I have from previous weeks because I don't go every week anymore since my pool list has been cold. I'm getting very, very, very particular in my books that I buy because the industry is getting shittier and shittier and we already harped on the economy. So uh, this is 20th Century Men. Um, I talked about this with Skip somewhere and I can't remember where, but uh, this is a neat book. Uh, I think I actually did, might have done a video on this. I think I did a review. I'm, I'm getting C now. But, uh, yeah. If I didn't do a review, maybe I will. I'm almost positive I did. Uh, but this is a really cool, very cerebral, this is a dense, kind of sophisticated comic. I, I wouldn't, if you're just the kind of person who likes fun, simple, adventure you know. Uh, I just said adventure jeez. Uh, but this is neat. This, this... Get this person's name, Camp. It was his first name. Um, anyways, I forget the person's name. It's someone like to look out for. The writing in this is pretty impressive. Then there's Red Batman, White Knight Presents Red Hood, number two. All this is is sort of a filler book that is meant to give you background on Red Hood as he exists in the Batman. White Knight Presents, no, the Batman White Knight Beyond, whatever, <laughs> yeah, Beyond the White Knight, that's it, because um, the character gets introduced in the story without any sort of origin or any back, he's like, boom, there he is, this is a book to be like, well, who is he, because this, Murphy's verse is very different than, uh, and then we got this other Robin Gann, who's weird, I actually read this book, I might do a review on it. It's, it was a letdown. Um, I'm really actually very disappointed in this book. It's not awful. I'm happy, I guess, that I've read it for the back, but it's just, it was very mediocre. They did the bait and switch with the artist. There's a lot of complaints I have, but otherwise I love the Murphy verse. I love Sean Gordon Murphy art. So look at these covers. Um, you know what? Sometimes you can't hit them all out of the park. So I'm not going to be really, I'm not upset. I'm just disappointed. Um, then there's Erratic is back. And now my comic store sold out instantly within the first couple hours. I forgot to put this on my pull list of the A cover, so I had to get the B cover. The B cover is pretty nice, but I'm a big fan of this guy right here, Kari Andrews. He did the A cover, so I might have to go find an A cover somewhere. But holy cow, I was late to the party on this book of the original Erratic, which you can get the trades like $9.99. Absolutely go get it. If you are a person who likes... Spider-Man. Remember I said adventure -y comic? <laughs> if you like fun, simple, and I don't mean like simplistic like you're a dunce. I mean the simplistic like you're just simple, fun stories. Like uh, like comics used to be. Like Spider-Man. Um, this is how I wish Spider-Man was done. I don't know about this one, the first one. I, I cannot praise it highly enough. Kari Andrews nailed it in so many factors. This is a fun superhero book, and I am sold. And this every time I read stuff by this guy, I just become more and more a fan. So, erratic. Tell me if you're getting it. 
or passing up. Then there's Starhenge. Uh, Liam Neeson. No, not Liam Neeson. <laughs> Liam Sharp. He, uh, he's, he's been an artist that I've liked for a while. Um, and I follow him on Twitter and he was saying some cool stuff and he was promoting his book and he was being real nice about it. And I responded back to him and then he responded really nice back to me. And it was just kind of a pleasant exchange. And I was, you know, in this day and age where comic book pros are so just, just constant jerks, just constantly trashing the fans calling us bigots and racists and all this stuff, putting their politics everywhere. Liam's out there just trying to make a good book. And this was a passion project to his, and I was really respected uh, how his behavior, and I was like, you know, I already like your art, and you, you're doing a book. This is like some 20 years ago that you, you came up with this idea that you just wanted to do. And I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll try it out. It's very strange and weird, um, but I like strange and weird, so um, I... I don't think this is a universal recommendation. This is something that I've just been enjoying because I think it's cool. You might think it's cool too, but it's it's not going to be for everybody. Then there's Good Boy, just a silly comic from Source Point Press. It's small. Um, the whole concept of the John Wick thing with, but in reverse, where it's the dog avenging is it's interesting. It's just fun. I, I love dogs and. Sometimes I just like to get an underground comic book because I, I have a, a nostalgia for for those. I mean, I was back in the day when Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles wasn't the ginormous thing that it is when it was just this little indie book that was published out of some dude's house. It was an underground comic. People, Many, many people aren't old enough or been collecting comics enough to remember that time when it wasn't this monolith. Um, but... There's, there's a certain quality that can only exist in underground comics. And um, when you get to the corporate level, the big press stuff, it just it gets a little bit uh, sanitized. It gets corporatized. You know, you, I think you either know what I'm talking about or you don't. Prodigy, Mark Millar. I, I am more and more... Every day I'm more impressed with this guy. He recently came out and talked about his plans about releasing. He's got a comic book coming out. It's going to be a buck ninety nine. It's called Night, not Night Shift. It's Night something. Um, dang it, <laughs> my memory is so bad. It's going to be a buck ninety nine comic, and he's doing it as an experiment to see if lower price comics will sell. But please try the book out. Um, the The simple pitch of the book is basically some kids get vamp vamp powers, or they become vampires, or whatever, but they decide it's not, instead of making this gothic, you know, vampire story, where like they, they decide to use their powers to become superheroes. It's not a totally, un- or totally original idea, but it's a neat idea, I think it works for comic books, right, that's most notable for its, you know, the medium of heroes, so it's a buck ninety nine, and I'm going to support it. For the re- two reasons alone, Mark Millar, who's a great talent, but that buck ninety nine. Like I'm not really big in the whole vampire stuff, but I, I absolutely have to support this because I want more comics. If, if this book is huge, if this book came out and sold like five hundred thousand copies or whatever, it would force Marvel and DC to take notice, right? As their books are the only book I got today that was five bucks was the DC book. <laughs> All the indies are still at three ninety nine, so. It's getting out of control. They're they're way overpriced. This is a good book too, by the way. This is uh, I mean, talk about this. Prodigy. I've done a review on it. I did a review about the original one in 2018. It's a really fun comic. It's not earth shattering, but it's it's very much in the vein of like a Mission Impossible style action movie. If you like those type of stories, he's not a secret agent, but the adventures that he has is very much in line of those type of stories. Edison Crane is the world's smartest man. He's like Reed Richards level intelligence. It's obvious, it's, it's comp booky. It's not real. The, the world's smartest man in reality is nowhere near like Reed Richards. But anyways, he's also a daredevil and all these things. So he can do so much. In fact, in my review, I talked about how he's a basically a Mary Sue. And that's a record scratch for a lot of people. And I understand, I'd be one of them to say, oh, Mary Sue, that's terrible. It 
absolutely, it very much is. But it's almost like Mark Millar said, huh, I, I wonder if it's possible to tell a story with a Mary Sue and make it work. Like, it's almost like a right... And he is. It's because this very much like Superman is not about who he can beat up. These stories aren't about how much ass kicking Edison Crane can do. So the Mary Sue aspect isn't necessarily what kicks in the story. And and I think that's how it makes it work. Um, Prodigy, check it out. That Texas Blood is a book that I recently got into. This was something I was interested in when I found out about it, but it was already like seven issues in or something like that. And I was like, oh, I don't know if I want to go back. And I got these other books. I, back then I was buying tons of other books. And then I was able to uh, pick up the whole run, I think, or up, up to 13, one through 13 on my pal England teen, uh, I Love Comics channel. He does the Saturday auctions every week and he does a lot of low price books. I basically think it's like the dollar bin of auctions. So it's a really great place to pick up tons of books for cheap. And if you like to just read, you'll pay way less than buying new comics at the store. And he had one through 13 for 13 bucks. And I was like, oh, pfft, sold. That would be four times as much if I were to buy them. Actually, even more because my shop adds a quarter. <laughs> to. So it's always cover price plus a quarter is the minimum my comic book shop sells back issues. Um, so, and I, and the number one probably would be a couple dollars above that too. So he had that. I was a great value. You can get lots of cool comics. Shout out to his channel. Um, come by and check that out. Get yourself a bunch of cheap books to read. Um, and so, yeah, so then I was like, well, now that I have one through 13, 15 and 16 were the newest issues on the shelf. So I bought those and had the whole run. And now they're up to 17. And so there we go. Um, that is my comics for today. And, uh, one last look at beautiful, uh, desert, whatever suburbs of San Diego. So hopefully, uh, you had some enjoyment listening to me blather on about comics. Some people are like, well, where's the Ash Wednesday videos? And it's like, I don't go to the store on Wednesdays anymore. Um, I usually go on Thursday because that's when I'm out and about and wasting, I mean, gas is actually becomes a consideration, um, uh, these days. So, uh, tell me down below in the comments, what books you're reading, what books are can't misses, uh, are there any books that I'm, that I have that are interesting to you or you want to know more about, uh, thinking about trying, um, and if you have recommendations, I always like to hear recommendations. Most of the books I read is because people recommend them to me. I try them out. So, uh, Please, I, I love hearing comments, even if it's just to say, hey, what's up? I came by and watched your video. Whatever, you don't have to put much, but that the interaction helps. Um, I don't do this for money, obviously. This is just a hobby for me. I love talking to comic fans, and um, uh, I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.